So a lot of people ask me why I flipped the classroom. Um, and this is, you know, I can really answer this in three ways, and I'm going to kind of chop that down into three boards here. One of them is efficiency. Um, it's a very simple process. Flipping the classroom is fairly easy, and the process that I'm modeling for you today is very low barrier. You can start this tomorrow. Um, it's also a very structured procedure. It's very simple. You need boards, you need a tripod, you need a camera, and you need a pretty face, right? And you can film these awesome videos tomorrow. And, you know, you can really uh, make your time spent in class more engaging and more meaningful for the students because you're taking that lecturing piece and putting it at home. The direct instruction is not going away. We're just kind of altering the location that it's in. So both of these combined allow for typical lectures to be condensed into shorter video-based lectures. And the reason that becomes helps you be more efficient is that you're no longer spending class times, maybe one class, two class, three periods, depending on how long um, your lecture is. You're condensing those down into videos. And the key here is to really pull out the key components that you need in that video. You know, you need a basic understanding of World War II. I'm going to give you that in that video because now that I have all this extra class time, we're going to do a lot more meaningful stuff in the class, which I'll get to in a second. You also don't have to worry about disruptions during your lecture or going off on tangents during your lecture. We all know we have that one kid that can get us off topic so easily. It's like he waits all day to ask that perfect question that you know is going to send you over the edge and then all of a sudden you've wasted 20 minutes talking about it. All right, so those disappear and if, and out of your lecture. They come into the class time where there's opportunity to push back on that kid and really explore those questions that he's trying to ask. So this increased efficiency means more time to explore content and opens class for discourse and authentic learning. All right, so those tangents that appeared in the lecture, they now take place in class time, a structured, facilitating environment where you're, you know, you're exploring with manipulatives and math. You're looking at primary documents and social studies. You're working on collaborative essays using Google Docs and science, I mean, in language arts. And in science, you're doing all sorts of labs and pulling in all these resources that you just didn't have time for before. So efficiency is definitely one of the things I would say as to why I flipped my classroom. Another one is reflective practice, reflective practice. We know we hear that buzzword a lot. Um, athletes, musicians, and artists, they all do it. They watch tape. They listen to themselves sing. Artists say their, their, art, their works of art are never complete. They're always finding ways to make it better. And teachers should be the same way. Right, we are always trying to evolve, evolve and get better and become master teachers. So you can always watch yourself and refilm. In fact, I've refilmed this video three or four times all right, since I filmed it. You can open the door to a larger audience. All right, so you guys are obviously going to view this video and provide me feedback. If I was in the classroom, my students, my parents, and whoever they shared that with would provide me feedback on what I could do wrong or how I could explain content better. And you reach your potential by knowing yourself. All right, I know how I explain things. Does it make sense to you? And if it doesn't, what can you provide feedback for me so that you can understand it? There's many videos that I've watched in class that I've earmarked and said, you know, I didn't explain that very well now that I've watched it back. It's been too late. It's already gone to my students, but they let me know, Mr. Miles, that didn't make any sense. I refilmed the video. Reflective practice. That did not exist for me at this level before flipping my classroom. Oh, and that's perfectly okay because that's going to happen quite a lot. So the other piece is building relationships, and the one that I really value the most um, you know, you're a YouTube celebrity. There's a lot of times where we have student conferences, parent conferences, and the parents come in and like, hey, you know, I know you. I've seen you on my computer, and that's awesome. They put a face to the teacher. You're no longer just this person in four walls of the classroom. You're a YouTube celebrity, all right? Students value that a lot. When I have 25 videos and send them to my channel and they subscribe to me, that's an added level of connectivity that wasn't there before. All right, now I'm the expert. It's no longer Google. We battled as teachers for a long time. We battled Google. All right, we battled Google. Oh, you don't know? Google it. Well, we don't need teachers. We'll just Google it. All right, but now kids are Googling me. They're Googling Mr. Miles' videos, or they're Googling my YouTube channel, or they're pulling up my videos. I'm the expert again. Teachers are the expert again in this flipped classroom. Also, transparency. There's absolutely no reason why parents and admins shouldn't know what's going on inside your class. I'm putting my lectures and my content out there for them to see. Another opportunity for them to provide feedback for me. And you kind of get this model here. Obviously, the teacher is the one that pushes out to all these people. The admin can provide service back. And it connects the parents in as well and the students. All right? it, it, it brings in that transparency piece that might not have been there before. And it builds these relationships, this relationship pattern between all the stakeholders involved in your classroom.